Good day, Scrub Wolf Wharton here. I hope you enjoy week one DVD with the Rancher Sean now and I, <laughs> the Mad Hunter, where we go from Port Douglas on the far north Cape York, all the way up in, on the inside of the Great Barrier Reef, visiting Lizard Island, then around to Princess Charlotte Bay. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Morning, ladies and gents. This is the start of the journey. Part in Port Douglas. Sean Owen and I. It's uh, 10 minutes to 7, um, and the conditions are really good. We're going to head for Escape Reef. It's about 50 mile away. It's on the outer edge. We're fishing in this stretch of Come the weekend, the weather's looking really bad, so we're going to get, get there now while we can. So, Bon, bon Voyage, Port Douglas. We're about to hit the high seas for two weeks of hell. <laughs> Escape Reef is approximately 50 nautical miles northeast of Port Douglas on the Great Barrier Reef. Escape Reef is one of 2,900 reefs that incorporate the Great Barrier Reef, not to mention the 900 islands and islets also. Wednesday morning, um, 20th, I am out there escape reef yesterday, just woken up and we've got a big journey to Lizard Island today, it's about 70 miles in a straight line, still blowing hard from the southwest. no point in hanging around here too long, I'm probably 15 now, I'll get up to 20 later. A good sleep Sean though? Log. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Navy's entering the log. <laughs> <laughs> we got some breadfruit or what? Uh, uh, I don't want to get scurvy. Anyway, so this is Escape Reef. A bit hard to fish yesterday with all the wind, but we had a few nice dives and whacked a couple of trout with the, uh, with the spear gun and um, both looked some nice um, little red bass, which go very hard for a small fish. A couple of kilo fish, but they hammer. Anyway, we've got to dust it up a few times too. Anyway, Next time you hear from us, we'll be a Lizard Island. Lizard Island, the home of the Dingal people, is Australia's most northern beach island resort. It's located about 1700 kilometres north of Brisbane, or 200 k's north of Cairns. Lizard Island was declared a national park in 1937. It's renowned for its huge black marlin fishery. It's also renowned diving locations for its proximity to the famous cut hole and ribbon reefs. This is the view from Cook's Lookout, some 359 metres above sea level. If you are interested in staying in the world famous Lizard Island Resort, the cheapest room here is 2000 bucks a night. Uh, yep, the room is looking pretty good to me. It took Shauno and I about an hour to walk this huge sucker. 
well knackered by the time we reached the top. They say back on the 12th of August 1770, Captain Cook climbed this hill, getting its name Cook's Lookout, to find a passage out through the Great Barrier Reef. The only land animal Captain Cook found on the island were lizards, hence its There's name. Captain Cook up there, that's where we climbed yesterday. We anchored here for one night in what I call Watson's Bay. Run up there again this morning, but Sean O uh, sort of wasn't so keen. With our first fuel drop being brought forward one day, we had another big steam all the way from Lizard Island to Flinders Group in very testing conditions and pretty much unfishable. After a testing 80 nautical mile run to the Flinders Islands, we steamed straight into Owen Channel. Ah, thank God, some calm water. Rightio, here we are, Stanley Island, the Stanley Flinders group. We just paddled in. Crock and Festival, just on our little tender there, and yeah, had a bit of a relax over here, and over in that corner, I saw a couple of good croc slides. They've been up on the beach, but just looking over here, the prawn trawling fleet in here, fishing fleet, and what's the name of this boat, Porto, coming in there? Uh, if it's a barge, it's M uh, MV Endeavour. This is a refuelling barge, does a lot of supplies up the Cape. Getting some fuel off these boys tomorrow, getting some water. First thing in the morning. And hopefully going off and looking at some Aboriginal rock art. Wild times. Wild times on Stanley Island. Sure as uh, have an afternoon fish. Good anchor, he's on. Ooh, a bit of a size. Oh, you got a mackerel. Good, good mackerel. <laughs> oh, it's a Spanish, I think. It's wearing me out, doing well. <laughs> How good's that for an anchor? Hey? <laughs> throw a spinner off the bow there. Oh, That's a nice fish, man. Yeah. You're seven kilo. Rock <laughs> <laughs> it! Uh, it's uh, Friday morning. 22nd, I think, of April at uh, Stokes Bay in the Flinders Group off Princess Charlotte. We're getting our first load of fuel and water at the um, end of a bay here. Gonna load us up with supplies and uh, we'll be ready for another week. Still blowing 20 25 knots. Um, but anyway, we'll start around the Flinders for today and have a look around and have a nice, easy day. No cruising in the boat today. A bit of walking and crabbing and fishing and should be good. And then tomorrow I head over to Princess Charlotte and get out this uh, strong wind warning that's hitting Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Bad earlier. Be better. Yeah. Thanks, mate. It's water, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just crack that. Flinders Islands National Park is a combination of seven separate islands. It's renowned for its Aboriginal rock art and its national parks walks. After steaming 200 nautical miles over the last three days, we needed some terra firma. This was our Flinders Island camp for the night where we'd kick back, have a fish, have a beer, and maybe knock a few oysters off the rocks. Sounds good to me.
for all the oyster lovers out there that like their El Natural oysters. First thing to do, get yourself a good hammer, a good knife here. That's what you're left with, pretty much. Nice big fat oyster. Mm. No, we'll be able to push around it. But uh, we're about to uh, head over and have a look at some Aboriginal paintings um, of an old colonial ship, which sounds pretty cool. Uh, we've had to come over, what's this island here called? Uh, Stokes, Stanley, Stanley, Stanley Island. Island. And we've had to come in between this reef here. It's really shallow, but we've got in here. We've got two more hours to the high tide, so we're over the worst of it. Um, this walk will probably take an hour or so, but so this is Stanley Island. It's, uh, haven't seen any uh, gators in this area, so we'll, we'll uh, test our luck. Like and Sean, that looks pretty. Uh, Fucking test our luck. He's ready to go. He's ready to whack a gator, whack a gator over the head with a uh, with an oar to do the job. Anyway, anything you want to say to your family before you head off? Uh, it's all right. Can't say hands. <laughs> Oh, Crocs, really? So we're here. The painting we're looking at is over in this uh, little ridge here on this northern tip. So, we're up on uh, the southwestern corner of Stanley Island, the Flinders Group, just looking for this uh, Aboriginal painting. It's an amazing view from up here. That's uh, sand spit in the background, right in the centre of the screens where we uh, uh, anchored up last night on Flinders Island. Wow. Hoping to find some um, a painting of a of an old cutter, an old ship that the Aboriginals did here probably hundreds of years ago. So, just having a look here, we just secured the boat over there and hopefully we find it. Seeing this Aboriginal rock art made the last three days of getting punished in 25 not sour weeses all worthwhile. The location was magnificent and the artwork was just incredible. One of the best things I've ever seen. We're at our Muck Creek camp here. Just right over in front of that, that little drain in front of us. You'll see the big croc coming out of there at night. And uh, yesterday he was having a sunbake on the uh, corner there. Big critter, uh, four metre croc, big, very big croc. Here's our anti croc device here on the beach, like a tank trap set up. Yep, old. Uh, Sean has built this croc barrier. Like a boma for lines. A native croc barrier. Comes up here, trips the wire, auto gets up, grabs my K bar, jumps on the croc through the brain, twists it quarter turn to the right. It's all over. All over. Got iPad covers for everything. Take his, remove his teeth, 
cut its toes off, the job's done. <laughs> it's just that easy. We're going crazy. The mad hunter over there is came out up. It's ready to go. There you go folks, we walked uh, 50 motors from camp. A little pig uh, jumped out in front of us. Holy shit. What do you got there, Andrew? Nice mangrove jack, mate. Dinner? That's a dinner. Nice. It's a nice jack out of the creek, eh? Beautiful. That's a good fish. I think the one that you just got bitten off was probably bigger than that. Yeah, it just punched, did me. Beautiful fish. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate, you're on video, so what's just happened there, mate? Yeah. You've just, just put the lure on, and Andy's hooked up to some beast. Chasing this thing down. Oh, I can see it. Oh, you know what it is? That's a catfish, is it? No, I think it might be a little Queensland groper. Let's take it again. Yep. It is, it's a Queensland groper. Oh, wow. Jeez, he's giving you some stick. Come on, folks. You want vermin? Oh. It's as good as it gets. Now, what do you want with this, mate? They're pretty toothy, aren't they? Look at the teeth on that, mate. It's amazing. Yeah. Thanks. It's not a bad uh, barracuda for out of a creek. Not that it was a good cooter, but that's a big stuff out of a creek. Yeah. Didn't get you. That's what happens, isn't it? Oh, shit. At the entrance to Muck Creek was a snag sticking out of the water in about two metres of depth. This snag was covered in golden snapper. Monday morning, packing up the camp, move location. I've smashed all the uh, scrub bulls in this area. My name now is Scrub Bull Bolton. Over here we've got the crack hunter removing his trip wires. Oh, there's a crack, there's a crack in camp, there's a crack in camp. Oh no, false alarm, false alarm. There's the river. There's a four meter croc uh, in that pool there. And it's not happy happy about us being here. There's Baruna. We got a bit of rain last night and this morning. I'm um, not, not the best for packing up. Anyway, time to move to greener pastures. Well that was the first week in a nutshell. The best description of week one is quite simple. Bloody windy. Not to worry, so far so good, we're having a brilliant time. See you all soon for week two.